you did purchase FRTs. Again, you wouldn't be in trouble if you just give those up to us. Nothing to do with him whatsoever. He just happened to be standing, I guess, this far away whenever right. we showed up to arrest him for an arrest warrant. Mistakenly went into the wrong restroom and it was just purely a misunderstanding. We got this video from a neighbor who asked to remain anonymous. It shows the agents pulling up in a van. I agree with you at all. I understand. I, I don't want to be here anymore than you want me to sure. be here. It, well, it's, the problem is, is you. Number four, ATFF agents praying. An ATF agent's encounter with a former SEAL Team 6 contractor over forced reset triggers purchase sparks controversy, highlighting issues of law enforcement overreach, personal privacy, and arm regulation complexities in the U.S. The contractor's reaction to the ATF agent's knowledge of his FRT purchases underscores concerns about digital privacy and surveillance, as the agent's approach to ensure compliance with arm regulations becomes contentious. In this video, we can see the role of ATF agents in collecting FFT triggers and forced reset triggers. The video emphasizes the importance of having a warrant to search a person's house and knowing their registration number. This shows challenges faced by the ATF in dealing with foreign buyers who are reaching out to them through online platforms. The ATF agents are not the only ones who are involved in this practice. They have been known to knock on doors and make decisions against citizens who have spoken their minds about what they buy and do. However, the government is making decisions based on what they believe they are not serving the citizens. I own the company Moonlight Industries. Okay. Oh, really? So we make like low visibility, uh, like low visibility MP7 rigs. Oh, nice. yeah. Okay, awesome. cool. So were you expecting us that just recently the ATF um, classified the uh, FRTs, the, the force? Sure, yeah. So we are aware that you may have purchased some of these FRTs. Okay. So I don't have any comments on this subject. Uh, I won't be uh, giving you anything. It seems like that the problem lies in the fact that the ATF agents are not making laws, but rather they are relying on citizens to make rules for their own household and pets. The ATF claims that they are making rules, but there has been no vote or congressional hearing that says they don't make laws. This statement gives the ATF all the power. If someone is caught with one of these FFT triggers without a warrant to search their house, it is considered a felony. The question is how someone can get caught with one without a warrant to search their house, as they cannot take part in an overstep past the line that says this is or is not legal just because they have a badge. American people may feel that the ATF is committing crimes right now as they are the ones who knock on the doors and knock on the doors. They argue that the ATF needs to learn some sales techniques and that the American people should be more concerned about the consequences of their actions. Observers criticize the ATF agent's equipment and professionalism, particularly the use of an AR-500 gong in her plate carrier, emphasizing the importance of proper equipment and presentation in law enforcement operations. I'm not refusing anything. I won't be answering any questions you did purchase FRTs. Again, you wouldn't be in trouble if you just give those up to us. I agree with you at all. I understand. I, I don't want to be here anymore than you want me sure. to be here. Sure. It, well, it's, the problem is, is you, or you go against the citizens because they've spoken what they buy and what they do. The citizens are speaking. We, like you said, you know, we just hear, we, we are the ones that just come and knock on the door. We sure. just enforce the laws. We don't make- Number three, robbed by ATF. Carlo, a retired U.S. Navy veteran, was on terminal leave when he was looking to buy a buffer tube from a shop selling various parts. He contacted the store owner on Facebook and was informed that he was under investigation by the ATF. Carlo assumed the man was paranoid and was just looking for a buffer tube. The store owner informed him that the buffer tube he was looking for was a special configuration A5. Carlo opened his Tesla trunk to buy the buffer tube and went home. ATF agents and vehicles converged on the store, drawing arms on Carlo and telling him to put his hands up. They interrogated Carlo for about two hours, and he was questioned separately while in handcuffs. They asked him about supplying the city with solvent traps and mash guns, which they thought he was a ringleader in an illegal network. Carlo answered their questions, but advised people not to talk to law enforcement. During the interrogation, ATF agents noticed Carlo's arms which were in plain view and cost over $28,000. While the interrogation was happening on the side of the road, the ATF agents noticed the arms and started taking selfies with them. 
This incident highlights the importance of law enforcement in preventing illegal activities and protecting the rights of law-abiding citizens. The agents took selfies with the man, who denied hiding drugs in the vehicle. The agents asked for his consent to search the vehicle, but he refused, stating that he didn't want the Tesla video and audio recording to stop. The agent's demeanor changed, and they began seizing his arms and confiscating property without serial numbers. The agents asked if the silencers were homemade, but the man had a BT pistol with a tail hook brace and an 11 and a half inch upper in his trunk. The agent accused him of having an illegal SBR configuration, but he presented paperwork for all legally owned items. The man then went to the local ATF's agent's office to present his paperwork, which included background checks, tax stamps, fingerprints and photos. Nothing to do with him whatsoever. He just happened to be standing, I guess, this far away whenever right. we showed up to arrest him for an arrest warrant, thing like that. As at this time, you're not charged with anything. Right. Okay. Like I said, she's not here or she would be standing here. To, yeah, I'm just trying to be honest with you. Um, I will encourage Stacy to try to stay in the loop with you. The agent accused him of having an illegal SBR and not having the proper paperwork for it. The man then recorded a video in which the ATF claimed he was completely innocent of everything. The agent's supervisor explained the situation to the man, who was scared to be standing there. A man encountered armed federal agents in a parking lot and was unsure if they had body cams. The man was not charged with anything and was not involved in the incident. The man's sister was murdered during a home invasion and he went to her funeral. A United States Navy veteran, an immigrant with zero criminal record, was robbed at gunpoint by ATF agents. His property, valued at over $22,000, was stolen. The ATF has a central facility in West Virginia where they destroy these items, but some of them get out due to the ATF and their employees selling illegally. This case is not unique, but it is a common occurrence. People who have their items seized legally rarely get them back. This man had over $22,000 of legally owned arms, equipment, and NFA items stolen from him by ATF agents. He reached out to Congress congressional reps locally and only heard back at the state level. The man's case needs to be blown up and the ATF held accountable for their actions. He is living with crippling anxiety, unable to sleep every morning and checking the county warrant website to see if the ATF is going to raid his house and charge him with the legal possession of an SBR. This fear for his status as a law-abiding citizen in America is affecting him and the ATF agent's actions could change if the man's status is not compromised. Unknown kind of thing, like what's happening behind the, the curtain. Nobody even gave us the information how to get here. Like, we had to find that out. I called her the first time she picked up. It was that the same day. Mm -hmm. uh, she asked who I was so she could show my number. But... Number two, ATF agent arrested. UW Madison police said Justin Fahey slipped his phone under a bathroom stall at Whitty Hall and took photos of a woman using the bathroom mistakenly went into the wrong restroom and it was just purely a misunderstanding. This incident happened on the lower level of Woody Hall, which is technically open to the public for class. Wiped his phone to a previous backup. So in our minds, that was an indication that he was trying to hide evidence. From. Doesn't worry you for like a long period of time because you know how quickly they respond to situations like that. Police said the 27 year old identified himself as a special agent with the ATF and said it was all a misunderstanding adding that he went into the wrong bathroom. Security footage from inside Whitty Hall showed Fahey was in the women's restroom for at least 14 minutes. WISN 12 News spoke with the ATF, which confirmed Fahey does work for the Bureau, but would say nothing more, citing personnel matters. UW-Madison police booked Fahey of Monona in jail. They also banned him from campus. Number one, ATF agents raid Jacksonville home. New video shows federal agents opening fire in an Arlington neighborhood while serving a search warrant for a weapon dealing investigation. Agents with the ATF said they were doing a public safety operation when shots were fired. Investigators with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, brought in as an outside agency to investigate the incident, said the man federal agents were investigating pointed an arm at them as they served a search warrant. However, a man who was in front of the home said that didn't happen and the agents never identified themselves. Video from a front-mounted security camera outside a home on Coco Avenue showed the agents pulling up in a van and several SUVs. The sliding door of the van is slightly open. 
they stop at the home next door. Almost immediately, a dozen gunshots are heard. Moments later, agents can be heard yelling for the men to get on the ground and stay still. The camera angle does not show the three men at the home. Therefore, it doesn't show whether one of them pointed a gun or not. No one was hurt, and the agents detained the three men at the home. Two were outside, and the other was inside. According to the obtained report showing JSO arrested Darnell Rice, 27, on charges of aggravated attack on law enforcement. The Department of Justice had already filed a complaint on charges of unlawful possession and transfer of a mash gun. Another man who was there says that didn't happen and that agents never... We got this video from a neighbor who asked to remain anonymous. It shows the agents pulling up in a van. That particular time, I felt like they wasn't doing their job and my life was in jeopardy. I actually thought I was going to die. Today. Now, Rice was the only person arrested in that raid. He faces up to 10 years in prison. He's being held in federal custody and faces up to 10 years in prison if convicted. His booking report shows he worked as an armed security guard. The federal complaint accuses him of illegally selling a Glock handgun with a modification switch that turns it into a mash gun. The federal agent said he sold it to a confidential informant for $1,800. A man has accused two ATF agents of reckless behavior after being nearly struck by bullets while working on a car at Rice's house. The man claims that the agents were not involved in an investigation and that the weapons were inside the home. He claims that he felt his life was in jeopardy and thought he was going to die that day. The incident occurred during an ATF-led public safety investigation and the agency is working with local law enforcement partners to fully account for the events. ATF is prohibited by law from providing further information at this time as the investigation is ongoing. The incident has raised concerns about the safety of individuals and the effectiveness of ATF agents. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.